Oh, I'm here on behalf of the uh, Iowa Museum Association to present this award for new museum recognition and recognition of the Jane Young House Vintage Exhibit established in 2019, Webster City uh, Women's Club. And so on behalf of the Iowa Museum Association, uh, thank you for everything that you've done for the museum world. So well, thank you, Aaron. Well, thank, yeah, you. thank you. And thanks to IMA for everything that they've given us. Well, good. We and we're always it very much. Well, and, and the IM, uh, Iowa Museum Association is here for small museums, uh, medium and large museums throughout the state of Iowa, and we act as a resource for for the area. So if you have any questions or anything, just let us know, and we try to help solve them. So um, I'll kind of get out of the shot here, okay. and then. Uh, Give you guys a moment there. And if you want to say anything else special, this is the time. All right. Well, thank you. Okay. Uh, this is the Jane Young House. It's the home that was built by Kendall and Jane Young back in 1873. Uh, Kendall was a banker and a farmer. Uh, and a philanthropist. He left his entire estate to the city to build the library which is located next door and uh, this home is now uh, in the care of the Women's Club and has been since 1923 so almost for a hundred years the Women's Club has been taking care of this lovely house and uh, this is where we hold our meetings. It's also open to the public for rental for different kinds of social functions like showers and receptions and recitals. And uh, we're just really, really happy that we can uh, share it with, with the community and with other people throughout the state. And we've had a lot of visitors from out of state as well. We just uh, developed, well actually over the years, the Women's Club um, collected a lot of hats and clothing from its members. And when we started looking at those in 2018, we thought there's some real treasures here that need to be shared with the public. And so that was sort of the genesis of us developing the vintage clothing exhibit that is upstairs on the second floor. So we have had, what do you think, Darlene? How many different displays? Oh gosh, eight or nine probably. The first year we were open, we were so excited to show everybody how much stuff we had. So I think we flipped the rooms five times. Okay. <laughs> and that's a committee of four. Yeah. Yeah. And so we did this one in early February and thought, well, it'll just stay there till August. Okay. Well. <laughs> It's going to be here a little while. Yeah. We only had one day when the public could come in and see oh. it. Oh, well. Yeah, so. It's and that's kind of, you know, and at the Bland and I, for our permanent collection, I cycle it every year mm -hmm. out. And now it's going to be up for two years because I want people to see it. Yeah, know? right. So. Right. So, <clears throat> this is the tea party or the lawn party. And all of these dresses are part of our collection and the hats and the furniture for the most part. The, are the pictures original? The, um, except for the the fixture in there, yeah. 
This is the only one. Is new. A replacement. Yeah. Mm -hmm. From downstairs. Otherwise, they were all rewired and polished up. And yeah. Yeah, they're. And LED bulbs put in. Yeah, and that's it. <laughs> but we table. put uh, mini splits in each of the rooms. Okay. Because when we visited at Iowa State uh, with the Department of Historical Clothing, mm -hmm. um, she said, you know, the temperature and the humidity are really what's important. Yeah. And all of these garments, like we had over 200 hats and over 200 clothing items. Mm -hmm. um, they've been up here through cold and heat and humidity. So we're really very proud of how well they've been preserved yeah. in spite of themselves. No, this so. is, it's a great way to control each space too yeah. because yeah. in these old homes, heat can temp, uh, fluctuate room by room. Right. And, so and then um, they all have to be, um, there has to be some drainage yeah. as the humidity yeah. comes out. But, um, one interesting part about the house are the curved walls. Mm -hmm. um, that takes a little bit of extra uh, money when you're building something like that. Yeah, exactly. And Kendall Young was the richest man in town, and so his mm. house needed to indicate that. Yeah, so. show it off. Yep. Yeah, yep. definitely. <laughs> yep. Well, wait, let's go ahead and continue on. Okay. I'll just kind of follow you here. So the exhibit in this room right now is like kind of like grandma's kitchen. And so we start with the house dress look and the aprons, which no upstanding housewife would have been without. Uh, and the old kitchen dinette kind of set. There's some interesting garments like this one is made out of a tablecloth. Oh, nice. And then, obviously, most of the clothing was either made at home or by a seamstress, a professional seamstress. So we've got the old sewing machine set up, mm -hmm. um, the old ironing board, and a lot of the kind of kitchen equipment that you would have probably had in those days. Yeah. But the floors, um, this room had carpet in it, but otherwise the rest were hardwood. Mm. And they're white oak oh. and they really cleaned up very nice yeah. um the youngs had no children so the floors really didn't get a lot of abuse yeah and uh, at one time there was radiator heat up here okay and so that left some damage on the floor which they were able to fix and then you're going to have to like shh, cover your eyes because now you're in the underworld <laughs> 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 um a lot of these things, like this old time bustle, were given were given to the community theater here in town, mm -hmm. and we had absolutely no use for them there, and so we have brought them all over here now. But the way women used to have to dress is pretty uncomfortable. Seems that way. Yes. Seems like uh, they went through a lot of torture to look oh, really good. Oh, so <laughs> many layers, and you know, no electric laundry, no air conditioning. Or oh, would have been miserable. Miserable, miserable. So even, and, and you couldn't really get dressed by yourself. Mm. You had to have somebody help you lace up the, the, uh, the deal. The corsets and <laughs> the corsets, yeah. I couldn't think of the word. Corsets and everything. So, and everything would seem like it was white. Mm. Um, lots of lace uh, like hand crocheted or tatted mm -hmm. lace trims hmm. and we tried to bring in things like the the hair on that mannequin and the rag rolls mm -hmm. before there were curling irons there were curlers and oh. before that there was rag rolls that's the old old yeah. way of doing that yeah much more comfortable to sleep on too. well i'm sure yeah. <laughs> you don't have those bits of plastic or whatever they we had a couple here in town that were very generous they donated the chase lounge hmm. and this uh, china cabinet and a couple of the pieces downstairs in the meeting room okay well, good so that's the main areas and then when you step down here, 
you're getting into the area where the housekeeper would have okay. had her quarters. And I usually dress up like Susan Doherty, who was their housekeeper for over 15 years. Hmm. And here's where we tell the story of Kendall. Uh, Kendall was born in Maine to a farm family. Um, after he was old enough to leave home, he went to, enlisted in the Maine militia, went up to the Aroostook County, Maine, where there was a border skirmish going on with New Brunswick. And so for about two months, he walked the border to keep those nasty Canadians away. Mm -hmm. And for that was given $18 and two land tracts here in land grants in the state of Iowa. Mm. And of course, that was before Iowa was even a state. Yeah. Um, then, of course, growing up on the coast of Maine, he went to sea and he was he went uh, as a seaman, he also went as a fisherman. Mm. Very hard life, really. And he decided rather than going out there in the cold fog catching fish, I'll uh, do bartering with the, with the fishermen. So he said, I'll, um, I'll sell them the goods they need. They'll give me their fish in exchange. So that's really how he got to be a, a merchant. Um, and then he, um, went to Wisconsin, and while he was in Wisconsin, heard about something called the Gold Rush out mm -hmm. in California. So he went out there uh, by oxen train, basically walking the entire distance, and settled not too far from Fort, Fort uh, oh, where, Sutter's, Sutter's Mill, and spent about two years there. Mm -hmm. Decided he had enough gold dust and gold nuggets. Um, he dug up all of his treasure, from the dirt floor in his shanty, packed the gold dust in his boots, tied the or sewed the nuggets into his clothes, grabbed a steam a clipper ship in San Francisco where he had cashed in some of the gold, sailed down to Panama, had to walk across the isthmus because there was no Panama Canal yet, mm -hmm. got another clipper ship, sailed up to New York, went to Philadelphia, cashed in the rest of his gold and went home to recover a bit. And then he had seen the prairie. He had seen what was west of the river. And so he wanted to go back. And he went to Illinois where he met a good friend who was a uh, friend for the rest of his life, who actually moved him, moved here too, and lived across the street. Hmm. Um, and then he said, well, I've got some land in Iowa. Let's go check that out. So. Uh, they went to what was Kasuth County area, tried to get a town started, uh, and as he was traveling back and forth to Iowa City to convince settlers to move west, uh, he would pass through Webster City and stay at the uh, Wilson House Hotel. And that's where Jane Underdown was working, and that's where he and Jane met. After they weren't able to establish a town that could be the seat, county seat of Kasuth County, they then came to check out the land here, and um, they stayed here. Hmm. Um, he, was, he started as a mercantile, uh, and then developed the bank, the first bank in town, and um, bought, continued to buy farmland. And it's that farmland today that still supports our library. Hmm. So. He and Jane uh, lived in another house in town for 15 years and then built this one, and they were here for 15 years. Jane's health was not real good. Uh, she had Bright's disease, so the doctors recommended that she go to the sanitarium in Battle Creek. Um, and that was like a very nice health spa for the rich uh, and almost rich. And so she spent the last 15 years of her life there. Mm. Um, and Kendall stayed here working. Um, and then when his health failed, he also went to Battle Creek. He was there about six months before he passed away. Mm. Um, their bodies were brought back here when each of them died and they're buried here. It was after Kendall died that they read his will and discovered that his entire estate was gonna be left to the city to build a library. Mm. So we're very glad he ended up in Webster City. Yeah. Yes. Definitely. Yes. And that's really kind of a great story. It's a story. great story. Yeah. It's a great story. Yeah. And that just sort of pays homage to his days at sea. Yeah.
Yeah, he sailed up and down the coast. He went to across the Atlantic. It's a harsh job. Yeah, it sounds yeah. like he had a, a, an amazing life, though. Oh yeah, yeah. Especially love hearing how how people end up here. Yeah. You know. Yeah, he took his uh, acres that he had there and traded them for more acres here. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. When Algona became the county seat of Casuza, it was like, okay, well, we got to do something else. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, good. So. Is anything back? To, or is this uh, the... Those two rooms were part of the servants' quarters, and that's just where we keep our, our storeroom. Ugh. Oh, we have five racks of clothes in there. Okay, yeah. so that's kind of your storage. Yeah. And then we sort of have a workroom there. The closet mm -hmm. in there you, um, has our men's clothes in it. Obviously, there's not as much men's clothes out and about. Yeah. So, so it's just a storeroom and workroom. But this would have been more servants' quarters yeah. back there. Mm -hmm. Okay. But, I mean, there's pine floors here plank floors, mm -hmm. um, lower yeah. ceilings, yeah. simpler, plain woodwork. Yeah. Yeah.